<sighs> All right, today, guys, I think I want to have a little more of an honest conversation with everyone. Um, yes, we're going to be talking about the word that honestly did get me hired that I put on my resume. Uh, but I really wanted to take this back. And as business people would say, bring this up to 10,000 feet. A lot of you that are subscribed to my channel either are already in the industry and want to break into data engineering, or some of you are just getting out of college. And that means a lot of you are trying to get your first job. And, you know, putting myself back in those shoes, remembering what it felt like um, to try to get my first job, I remember it was just terrible. Like, I spent months, like, I think almost a full year applying for jobs and not even getting interviews. You know, like everyone else, you could probably, if you calculated how many applications I put in, it was probably. Uh, easily hundreds of, of applications, many of which didn't get any form of response and it felt hopeless. And so like everyone else, I looked for different ways that could possibly, you know, improve my resume. You know, I took Coursera courses. I, I tried to build projects. I, I tried to do everything. Right. So when I see people asking me for like direct examples of projects, you know, I'm, I'm always kind of curious, like what the goal is there, because often what you'll find when you start working in the industry is that people will give you data sets or problems and just kind of expect you to find value in it. You know, the following direct, you know, line by line instructions for code will not help you here. You need to actually look at this and, and have a good understanding or a good grasp of what you can do in this situation. Because we are definitely going into a world, I think, that's going to have a lot more tools that do a lot of the hard technical work that I'm solving today. And that's going to push a lot of the value that we drive as data engineers, as analytics engineers, as data scientists, up the chain, meaning we're gonna have to go beyond just solving the technical problems, but we're gonna be forced to unavoidably have to think about how do we actually drive business value. And I think it's gonna both make things far more difficult for people that are more engineering purists, as well as easier for other people. And we're always gonna have a space for more pure engineering work where, you know, you're trying to better process large um, amounts of data. You're trying to create systems that better handle all of these, these different automated systems and ML models and things of that nature. But the other thing that will be very important will be how do you figure out how to drive value and which one of these things do you even take on first? And that's where if, for example, in my last video, when I give you examples of data sets, that should be a great foundation for you to practice those skills of, well, we have this data set. What can I do with it? I guarantee you that the person that created uh, the Elon Musk bot, I think he's a CS student, probably has job offers because of this bot that he created. I mean, it's not even arguably that complex to, you know, create something that scrapes uh, flight data and then push it to Twitter. It, it probably is very simple, but the idea was fun. And I think that's where you should be focusing on your focus when you're building a resume in general should be how are you driving value for a company? Because again, technology is one part of that picture. And as I'm moving into consulting, I'm figuring out that, yeah, that's literally like a quarter of my job. The rest of my job is, you know, having conversations, influencing people, driving, you know, certain initiatives. And the technology part of it is honestly almost sometimes the last thing you think about because People are a far bigger component. So before I dig into the word that honestly got me my first job, and I kind of tell a little bit of a story there, I just want to encourage you guys not to get stuck up on doing the, the perfect project with the perfect tools. And I constantly get asked, you know, should I learn Azure, GCP, AWS? Should I do, you know, Snowflake or Databricks? Which one's going to win? And in a weird way, it doesn't matter because a decade from now, we might be using completely different tools. But the one thing that doesn't change is trying to find value in situations, whether you're trying to figure out how to automate a process or whether you're looking for cost saving opportunities or ways you can like create more revenue for your company, because those in a weird way don't change because there's a common denominator, which is us, the people, the technology often changes, but we don't. The way we act as people, the way, you know, we respond to everything from ads to sales to, you know, everything else is about the same. So driving value will arguably always remain consistent and the tools you use to drive that value are what's going to change. So I'd worry less about trying to pick the right tools that are going to be used in the next 10 years, because honestly, most of us have no idea. And honestly, the tools that I learned <laughs> 10 years ago are not the tools that I'm working with today. But the one thing that has remained the same was the word on my resume, which was automation. That, that was the word. Like, I literally had the hiring manager come and talk to me and, you know, like, Hey, this is why we actually looked at you. This is why we cared. Um, he's like, you had the word automation on your resume. And so I wanted to do a ton of automation projects. So I figured you would know how to do it. And honestly, all the skills that I had 
on that resume or how I automated, like if I told you how I automated uh, the projects at school, um, it was literally uh, an access database. We we're using JavaScript through Internet Explorer. It was the weirdest, most, I mean, nicely put garbage way to automate anything in the world but they still looked at my resume because they didn't look at my technology. They looked at the value I could provide. They looked at the fact that I understood kind of the concepts of automation and not the tools of automation. Because again, automation changes, you know? Back then, I think we were using like VBA. Now I'm using Python, you know? I, but I learned Java in, in school and we use JavaScript to automate. So worrying about the tools is less important. Figuring out how to drive value that's what's going to get you the job. I mean, I just think back to then when I was trying to get my first job. Um, again, I'd been spending maybe nine months looking for this first job. And on that day that I happened to apply for this job, my parents had happened to be re-sanding their floors. So we had to leave the house because they were uh, you know, putting chemicals on the floors all over again and, and refinishing it. So we had to sleep outside in a tent. And my dad, who just happened to look over my computer and, you know, I was looking through jobs, I was going for jobs and he's like, well, why don't you just apply to this one? And he pointed to Providence Healthcare and Services. I was like, fine, I'll, I'll apply to this one. And that's the job that I got after applying for probably 500 different jobs. The one that my dad happened to point to was the job that I got because the word automation was on my resume because of a silly project that I did that involved a language and a database system, database system to access, that arguably very few people use. The language JavaScript is used, but not generally for automations of databases. So worrying about what tools are being used and what tools are being put on your resume are arguably less important. Make sure you've got the right concepts. So things like cloud, automation, you know, SQL, data analytics, like these are valid concepts and some of them tools that have like remained timeless. And I understand when you're trying to get your first job, you're just doing anything that will make you stand out. But the things that make you stand out, I think in today's world, aren't necessarily knowing how to program or knowing SQL. I think these are baselines. If you honestly want to stand out in this world where access to learning this kind of stuff is everywhere. Yeah, you need to figure out like, how can you be unique? And today it's honestly very different for me when it comes to like standing orders of jobs. Um, I actually have at least half a dozen offers um, that range from data engineering positions to like more uh, developer relation type roles, all at companies that I would love to work at. But that's because over the last half decade, I've built this brand and I've been able to show value through multiple different directions, through my passion for data and data engineering, through my passion for sharing knowledge. Like I, I love making these videos and sharing it with you guys. And that's why you'll notice a lot of my content isn't always heavily technical because there's a ton of other value that you drive at companies that have nothing to do with your ability to program. And that's personally where I'm trying to like push more and more into. It's like, how do I see solutions, but beyond just technology? Because a lot of the harder problems to solve aren't always there in technology, but they're in between people. They're in between processes. They're in between, you know, two companies that you could get to work together. And then, then together they could create a solution. And those are arguably personally, more difficult problems to solve. Technology problems are always difficult, but I feel like sometimes, at least most of the time, unless you're trying to do some sort of groundbreaking you know, research, have a pretty clear cut answer. But I'd say for me, most people problems and process uh, problems are far more difficult. Like there's just this ethereal point to them. Like how do you influence people? How do you drive things? How do I actually drive value for a company is a far harder question for me to answer than how you know do I build a data pipeline? And again, not everyone's there. That's where I am at and my journey. And you know, for a lot of you out there, you're just trying to get your first job and that should be your focus. Your focus should be, you know, building, learning how to code and, and, and you'll grow from there. But I think what's important is not to lose sight of the bigger picture. Realize that all of this, all this technology that you're learning, these tools you're learning are for driving value at companies. They're not just for building things for the sake of building things as much as engineers, that's what we would love to do, but we are trying to drive value one way or the other. Guys, I hope you realize I really enjoy this community that we've all built together. Um, I love everyone who's chatting up on the discords. You guys have been putting a ton of great work in there. Um, I see you guys helping each other and that just like makes me feel good. Like I just love seeing everyone that's kind of sharing from their knowledge and sharing from their skill sets. And yeah, let's just kind of keep that going. And I just hope this video helps inspire you to kind of realize that technology is like one part of a much bigger uh, picture for all of us.
So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.